Welcome all of you to Kimon Gakuen. It's, uh, we're extremely happy and honored that you're, you're here to join us today, despite the change of weather that we're uh, experiencing. My name is Diane Matsuda, and I will serve as your MC today. I am also one of the board members of Kimon Gakuen. So folks, uh, this has been a long time in coming. Um, and we're just so excited to get this project from where it sat for many years as paper plans on our hands to where we are today, to bring Kimon back to being fully utilized by our community. And I just wanted to um, ask you after our official program to take a, take a look at the renderings that have been created by our um, wonderful historic preservation architects at Trainer HL and they are here today uh, they have been with us through thick and thin, and we really appreciate their, their patience and their support and their confidence of us being able to move on. So as you know, no project gets off the ground without the support of many, and we have many, many people to thank here today. But before we get to that, we want to make sure that we continue to stay in the good thoughts of the many ancestors who made this building possible for us to preserve and use and enjoy for many generations. To help us with our appreciation, we are grateful to the members of the Japanese American Religious Federation, or by its acronym JARF, who are here today to share a blessing, prayer, and chant to thank those before us, those here today, and those who will come tomorrow. So I'd like to introduce all of them, and they will all come up individually. Uh, starting with Reverend Rodney Yano of Konko Church of San Francisco, Reverend Elaine Donlin of Buddhist Church of San Francisco, and Reverend Hiroko Suzuki of Christ United Presbyterian Church. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Rodney Yano from the Conco Church of San Francisco, just one block away, right in the corner of Mission Laguna. And um, there's a long history within the Japantown community, and today is a, it's a prayer in solidarity. It's a prayer for safety and for wishes and for success for this whole project. Wish you interest. Saishi Pokemon Community Center Restoration Project on Friday, March 1st, 2024. Dear Divine Parent of the Universe, Tenchi Karimo Kamisama, I, Reverend Yano of the Konko Church of San Francisco, humbly recite the following prayer. We humbly gather before you with hearts filled with gratitude and hope as we embark on the sacred journey of restoring the Kimon Community Center, a place that has been a beacon of education, culture, and community spirit. I bless this noble endeavor as we strive to revive the historic building at 2031 Bush Street in the heart of Japantown. With your divine guidance, may this restoration project flourish, transforming the Kimon Gakuen into a vibrant hub that echoes the rich history and traditions of our beloved community. We invoke your divine presence, Kamisama, to shower your blessings upon this sacred space. May the renovated Kimon Community Center be a sanctuary for learning, a haven for community services, in a stage for cultural celebrations. Let its walls resonate with the echoes of the past, celebrating the legacy of Kim Wong Gakuen since its inception in 1911. As we honor the history of Kim Wong Gakuen, we acknowledge the struggles of the past, 
the discrimination faced by Japanese immigrants and their children. We seek your divine guidance to ensure that this restored center becomes a symbol of inclusivity, breaking down barriers, and fostering unity among all our members of our community. Bless the hands and minds of those who work tirelessly on this project, from architects and builders to volunteers and supporters. May their efforts be infused with divine energy, bring forth a renovated space that exceeds expectations and its inclusivity and accessibility. Dear Kamisama, we pray for the success and safety of this endeavor to create a space where cultural activities, educational pursuits, and community services can converge. May the Kimongaku Community Center stand as a testament to the resilience and strength of the API communities for generations to come. In your divine light, Kamisama, we entrust this restoration project with your care. May it be a source of joy, inspiration, and unity for the entire Japantown community. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Reverend Elaine Donald from the Buddhist Church of San Francisco. For the Buddha, learning was the endless pursuit of knowledge. He constantly told his disciples one should never be satisfied with the teachings of a single teacher or master, but to constantly be on a quest for even greater knowledge. What we're celebrating today is so important, and a quest for that greater knowledge. We all gather here today in friendship and community, taking a moment out of our busy lives to recognize and celebrate this noble endeavor of renovating the Kimongakun. From fundraising, to the architectural plans, to the actual reconstruction, may all involved in this re renovation project be granted the patience to persevere through challenges, the strength to overcome obstacles that may come along, and the satisfaction and joy in the completion of this project. May this continue to be a place where future students discover the joys of learning, the empathy of connection, and the wisdom of community. May minds be open to new ideas and perspectives, cultivating fresh insights filled with learning in the quest for greater knowledge. Lastly, may all, through their kind support of this very noble goal, endeavor to build meaningful connections and share warm fellowship. In cultivating the positive seeds from the past, it allows for the wisdom, resilience, and strength of this community to flourish within this school. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Hiroko Suzuki from Christ United Presbyterian Church. I'm pastor for Japanese speaking ministries. Mirasan Ohayo Gozaimas, Kiristo Godo Choro Kyokai, Nihon Mobu, Otanto Hitogimas, Suzuki Hiroko Tamoshimas.今朝は第二次世界大戦中は締めなくてはいけませんでしたけれどもその後にまた再会してそしてアメリカに住む多くの方々に特に幼稚園それから高校生に至るまでの方々に日本の言葉そして日本の文化を継承していただくためにそして紹介するために
本当に命を受けた兄弟姉妹として文化や言葉が違ったとしても同じ人類として共に私たちは支え合う共に協力し合う愛し合うということが本当に大切だと思いますですからこの金門学園のように日本の文化日本の言葉自分が普段使っていない自分が今まで知らなかった文化言葉を知ることにより自分の世界が広がるだけではなくて本当にこの世界中に住む多くの方々と自分たちはつながっているんだそういうことを学んでいただける場としてこの金門学園は本当に大きな働きをされてきたと思います。今回、えー、プレストンカリフォルニア衆議院、そしてまたサンフランシスコの、えー、市議会の方からの支援を受けて、このように改修工事を始めることができました。まだまだ皆さんからの支援が大切です。どうぞ皆さん、この大切なこのコミュニティだけではなくて、多くの方々にとって集まる場であり、文化を知る場であり、お互いに本当に協力し合える場である、そのような場として、この金門学園が、ままた使われますように今も使われ続けていますけれどもさらに続けられますようにどうか皆さんこのことを覚えてそして皆さんにできる少しでもいいですから形でこの金門学園の改修工事にあたって協力していただきたいそのように願っています。Would you please bow your hands and pray with me?Gracious God, thank you for this time, thank you for this gathering. We give you thanks that you have been, you have blessed Kim Mong Gakuen that has been offering us so many programs to many people, especially kindergarten and high school students, to learn Japanese language and Japanese culture. We pray that you will bless us and guide us as we begin this capital campaign to rehabilitate Kim Mong Gakuen building. 神様どうか私たち一人一人の心を開きそしてこの金門学園の改修工事計画が本当にあなたの御心にかなうものとなりますように私たち一人一人の心を開き手をあなたが導いてくださいすべてを感謝してイエス様の皆を通してお祈りします In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, members of JAR, for your kind words, blessings, and, and prayers for us.、Um, I realize、uh, if you can look out and look at one another, Kimon Gakuen hasn't seen as many people in a long, long time. <laughs> and it's just so wonderful to see this auditorium once again being used. Uh, and I realize that many of you are visiting Kimon Gakuen for the first time, but we definitely hope it will not be your last. So I wanted to share a few facts about this building, this very beautiful and very important building. It was created or built in 1926 by architect William C. Hayes, a professor of architecture at UC Berkeley. And for those of you who are architects or historians or preservationists, The building was designed in the Mediterranean Revival style, a style popular during this period for educational facilities in the Bay Area. The estimate, which I have right here in front of me, written by Mr. Hayes, indicates that the total cost of this building was $48,118.50. Even though that can't even buy you a car today, That was a lot of money back then for this community to raise.、Um, and at its zenith, Kim Mongakuen had a student body of approximately 500 students composed of Nisei, second generation Japanese Americans, mainly who resided in the 30 blocks of pre World War II Japantown. Parents knew where their children were after attending regular school. And it was also a way to keep young people safe from what was happening outside of Japantown. And as we know, World War II changed the lives of Japanese Americans forever. With the signing of a document by President Roosevelt in 1942, Japanese Americans went from being productive and vital members of society 
to an ID number and sent off to U.S. concentration camps located in desolate parts of the United States. Only allowed to take what they could carry, they left behind so many things they worked so hard to build and left a community that they called their own. Adding to the misery was what happened after the war. Japanese Americans moved back to Japantown and they were faced with another government removal called redevelopment. This forced disbursement and disruption of our community caused a permanent hole in Japantown and definitely an impact on enrollment here at Kimmon. Kimmon was not only a language school, it was a hub for performances, for speech contests, for dance recitals, and to watch old time Japanese movies. It was the weekend spot. But instead of talking about what it was back in the day, we are also here to talk about what it can be tomorrow. We are th very, very thankful to have a leader in the California State Assembly who recognized this. And I'm going to ask a member of our Japantown community and a former alumnus of Kimongakuen to introduce him. May I introduce to all of you Paul Osaki, the Executive Director of the Japanese Cultural and Community Center of Northern California. Good morning. You know, being in this auditorium brings back a lot of fond memories of my time here at uh, Kimon. Unfortunately, one of them isn't being able to speak in Japanese. <laughs> you know, I remember my first day of class here, I was six years old, and the teacher got up and said something in Japanese, and then each of the stu students would say, stand up and say something in Japanese, and it went row by row by row, and I was in the very last seat. And I was listening, trying to figure out, what are they saying? This is the first day of class and they can speak Japanese. So when it came to my time, I stood up, I hadn't figured out what they were saying, and I remember I just started crying, like crying like really hard, to the point where the teacher took my hand, walked me down the hallway, uh, my grandmother was principal here um, and led me to the pr my grandmother's office to just stay. Um, later I found out what they were saying was their last name in Japanese. <laughs> I used to sing in recitals here. Um, every class had their ceremonial song. Um, I sang the same song for three years straight. I still remember that song. Um, but, uh, you know, I have other fond memories of growing up here. Um, locking the teacher in the supply cabinet, playing tag in the hallways, going up to the roof, throwing paper planes down, the, uh, to the kids playing in the playground. Um, but, you know, most of all, my fondest memories here is actually coming to this auditorium with my father as a child watching Samurai movies. And I still have that love today of watching those movies, actually, so the series Shogun is uh, something very exciting to me. But I, I learned and had my love coming here with my father. Today we're just not here to kick off the um, capital campaign to rehabilitate Kim Won Gakuen. We're here also to recognize Assemblymember Phil Ting for his incredible and historic support of Japantown. You know, Phil has always been a friend and supporter of Japantown. He has, uh, this has like been his second home. He's always attended events, come to festivals. Um, he played basketball at the community center. Even busy as an elected official, he would come and play basketball. But it was his historic support that began, began in 2021 that we will always be indebted uh, and grateful to him, including five million to renovate to Buchanan Mall, six million to help renovate and redesign the Peace Plaza, and then 4.5 million to begin the rehab and renovation of this very school.
uh, this totals $15.5 million in uh, just the last three years. And so um, he will always be remembered um, for not just um, the, the contributing of money, but really for the permanent and lasting effect of how this is going to shape and revive Japantown for generations to come. So we are internally grateful. I uh, known Phil since he actually was the executive director at the Asian Law Caucus and served with him on the, um, the first California Commission on Asian Pacific uh, Islander Affairs, um, which was formed to help change the political climate of social issues for Asian Americans. But soon after that, Phil was appointed um, by then Mayor Gavin Newsom uh, to be assessor, uh, recorder of San Francisco, and this really propelled his political career, winning each re-election by 80% of the vote, and then moving to the state assembly, um, which again, on, on the very first day as leadership, he was appointed chair, uh, caucus chair, um, by the speaker. And he again won an election by 80% of the vote. I wish he would take that 80% of the votes for uh, other aspirations, but we know um, his political career is not ended. But as chair of the powerful Assembly Budget Committee is where he started to really make an impact with by being the first Asian American to hold that position. Phil's led to efforts in everything that has impacted our lives. Gun safety, environmental, anti-hate, homelessness, affordable housing, healthcare, student support, public safety. You know, Phil, um, unfortunately, um, will be terming out. Um, I've never agreed with term limits. My feeling is, if you don't like someone, then vote them out. But if they're good, you keep them in. Unfortunately, we will be losing one of our best. Um, but his contributions will be lasting. Um, his legacy will be his dedication to public welfare that have shaped the policies of the state and the city of San Francisco and, of course, Japantown. He has served as one of the most powerful Asian Americans who ever served the state and local government. I was looking at Jack, chat GPT and it said, Phil Ting's lasting political career is still unfolding. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have a standing ovation for assembly member Phil Ting? Thank you, Paul. Uh, it's a great honor for me to get introduced by my good friend Paul Osaki. I think, I think when Diane told my team that I was getting introduced um, by a former student at the school, I was a little bit surprised it was Paul, not, not um, to be honest. And I think now I know why. I, I, I can imagine the five Osaki brothers here, or at least the four of them, you know, here at the same time. And I imagine out of all of them, John, I know John's here somewhere, uh, that John probably is the best it's got the best Japanese out of all of them. That, 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 no, no, John, John's shaking his head, no, not, 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 not me either. Um, uh, you know, this is really exciting for me. I was here uh, a couple months ago to do a tour of Kimon Gakun, and uh, it brings back my personal memories. I, I did uh, Chinese school on the weekends, sort of similar to Japanese school, and my dad was, my dad was the principal for a year as well. So that's always a very scary experience is when you're, when your parent is actually involved in the school because everyone sort of looks at how well you can speak the language as to how good the school is. And so to me, um, you know, this is, this is an amazing cultural place. Uh, I think Diane put the context very well that this was a community that was extraordinarily vibrant for, for decades before it got devastated during World War II. Uh, we've seen how hard it is and how hard the community has uh, really fought to keep it together, to make it um, the heart that it has been. And of course, uh, as our community has grown, and which is a good thing. You know, before we could only live in certain, certain parts of San Francisco. Now that we've been able to grow and live all around the Bay Area, all around the state, 
and our community has blossomed and been in many, many places. But having said this, this is still one of only three Japantowns in the entire state. And this is a, this to me is the center of not just Japanese uh, America, but this is the center of Asian America. This is so important for us to be able to preserve our culture, uh, to be able to come together as a community, but then also to make sure that we are um, holding each other accountable for how we are gonna continue to grow the next generation, uh, how we are gonna build future leaders. I, I, I look at Paul, I even, I know, you know, with, with, with John moving forward, there's a lot of leadership that needs to step forward. And I think you need places like Himun Gakun to make sure that we are coming together, that we're organizing, that we are sharing our culture with others, but that really our that our communities are convening. And to me, that is extraordinarily, extraordinarily important. So when I, when I had a chance to tour this facility with Diane a few months ago, and um, you know, we talked about sort of what, what we could do at the state level and to be able to do $4.5 million in this last state budget was a, was a huge honor to me. Because to me, I just see, look at this incredible, I mean, look at this incredible space. This incredible space that really is completely underutilized, but this historic space in the heart of Japantown that really isn't just gonna be for the JA community, it's gonna be really for the Asian American community and really for the Western Edition community. Right, and so that's something that we are extraordinarily proud to be part of. Uh, as Paul mentioned, I was happy to also assist with Buchanan Mall, and I can't wait till that fountain, till that Ruth Asawa fountain gets turned back on. That's gonna be very, very exciting to me. And, and, and Paul's right. This is like, I remember um, Paul talking to me uh, every time uh, I was running for something or thinking about uh, running for something. He's like, you know, he, he's like, Phil, you know, like, I, I mean, I'll support you, but you gotta, you have to remain committed. You have to make sure that you, um, you know, I don't, I don't wanna just support you and then you're gonna disappear. And I, I think about that, because I mentioned that to so many other candidates who asked for my support. And so I look at, I look at my good friend, Paul Osaki, and, and to me, you know, being elected isn't just about, you know, getting the support from the community. It's making sure that you remember what communities you come from. And to me, while I'm not JA, this, this community is very much uh, part of me. It's part of my history in San Francisco, and it means a lot to me uh, to be able to give back just a little bit and to support the community the way the community has supported me. So again, thank you so much for uh, being here today, and I can't wait uh, till we get all the fundraising done so we can really reopen it fully and make it the hub of the community that it really deserves to be. Thank you. Thank you. And as a token of our appreciation, we'd like to ask our honorary chair, Kinko Sakamoto, to present uh, a gift to you. It's a, it's a gold origami lei, and uh, as all of you probably know, the symbol, symbol of a crane, the origami crane, means longevity. So we wish you uh, many, many years in elected office, assembly member, in whatever capacity. Um, and then for the big photo moment, if we could ask the assembly member to step back up again, and then with um, Sakamoto-san and Seino-san, who is the president of our board, our check. We all kind of wish that this was written to us, but we are very honored to show you the check from the state of California for five, $4.5 million to Kimon Gakle.
so much, Assembly Member. And we're, we're taking um, things a little bit out of order because we are so lucky today that um, we have Mayor Breed here to join us. And to introduce our mayor is Richard Hashimoto, a, a board member of Kimongakle. Thank you very much. Um, once again, Richard Hashimoto. I've been a board member here for about 13 years. And when we first discussed this uh, plan, it was just a pipe dream. And well, 13 years later, this pipe dream is coming to, uh, to fruition. So thank you very much, uh, State Assembly Member Phil Ting. And it gives me my humble, uh, 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 humble, uh, to announce our next speaker, uh, my esteemed uh, humble honor to announce Mayor London Breed. Thank you, Mayor. And you know, just like Paul did a uh, standing ovation for Assembly Member Phil Ting, <laughs> Madam Mayor, could you all join me for a standing ovation for Mayor London Breed? Thank you. <laughs> It is so great to be here to celebrate this extraordinary milestone. It's a bit of a homecoming for me. And I wanted to take an opportunity uh, to really appreciate the history of this institution and what it has not only meant to the Japanese community in the Western edition, but also what it has meant to the African American community. In fact, we remember, uh, unfortunately, uh, what happened during World War II and the concentration camps and how so many Japanese Americans who lived and built this community uh, were sent to those concentration camps. And at the same time, there was a huge migration of African Americans into San Francisco, working in the shipyard. This place was used as a place where people would register and uh, were assigned to places like the shipyard, but this institution also represented something very important to the African American community. It was once the Booker T. Washington Community Center, and it was the Booker T. Washington Community Center when there was a need and desire to help support the African American community uh, in a way that allowed for job opportunities, business opportunities, growth, and development. And the stories are uh, I'm sure some people here, uh, including people like Alan and Sandy Mori and others may have stories of that time, um, but we remember when people were coming home in 1945 from those same concentration camps and how the relationship between the Japanese and African American community uh, became a bit more of a bond in recognizing our struggles, our challenges, our issues, and in fact, this community came together to help raise money for the existing location of where Booker T. Washington Community Center is and serves the community to this very day. So I'm really grateful to be here uh, and really grateful that through um, the fund that has been created under the leadership of Supervisor Connie Chan working together, uh, that it provided an opportunity for $5 million from the city and county of San Francisco to add to the support from our assembly member Phil Ting uh, to reach that extraordinary milestone of almost all of the money to renovate this space. And so I appreciate uh, being here today to celebrate and to um, really see and experience the community firsthand. Um, there are so many people in this community that went to Niamachi Little Friends. Uh, I didn't realize Paul was one of them, and it's good to know that so many people who might be here today might have had that, that great experience, including many of the friends that I grew up with who came to Niamachi when it was here. Uh, through scholarships, through advocacy, through the raising of funds from so many of the board members who wanted to create a diverse group of students who can learn and grow uh, with one another's culture. And that's what this community has always represented. 
an opportunity to learn, to grow, and to continue the relationship and the commitment that we all enjoy with supporting one another. So it is great to be here. It's great to see each and every one of you here. And I want to say congratulations on this, extor uh, this extraordinary milestone. Uh, we know that this is an historic building and a lot of work will need to go into uh, ensuring that through this process it is supported and protected. And I see a number of folks who have been involved in making sure that the resources are available to create the kind of institution that's going to serve this community for generations to come. Thank you all so much for being here today. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Breed, and we, we really appreciate the support from the city and county of San Francisco. I hope that you will come back and come back often to see how we continue to rehabilitate uh, not only this auditorium, but the entire building. So to present to you as uh, the mayor for the city and county of San Francisco, we're going to ask um, uh, Sakamoto-san, our honorary chair for Kimongakuen, to present to you a origami lei. I'm sorry, I forgot my big check. Thank you again, Mayor Breed. We, Japantown has not seen this kind of money in a long, long time. I hope, though, it's not going to be the last. Um, we're taking things a little bit out of order, but I know that all of you are very polished speakers, and you can speak at any time. So I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Saino, who is our president of the Kimongakuen Board, to introduce Council General Osumi. Thank you, Diane. Uh, my name is Shinichi Seino. I'm the president of the Kimmon Gakuen. Uh, it's my greatest pleasure to welcome uh, you all uh, so that I may ask for your support for Kimmon Gakuen. We will renovate the building and uh, maintain it so that uh, we may continue to offer Japanese language classes and to offer the Japan Tan community a place they can use for the various uh, events. The project will start here today and will continue until our goal is met. Uh, this project was started by my predecessor, Ms. Kinko Sakamoto. Uh, she proposed the renovation of the building in 2016. At that time, she was uh, told it would cost uh, us seven to eight million dollars. Uh, she read the board and received in 2019 a landmark designation and the legacy business uh, uh, recognition for our school. We are receiving the uh, uh, MOACD grant uh, this year 
So we may ready to start a project right now. We'll uh, bring the history uh, to our future. Now, it is my honor to introduce our uh, next speaker, the Council General of Japan, Honorable Yo Osmi. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to be here at the opening of the Kimmongaken Capital Campaign. And thank you to everyone involved in making this event possible, including today's speakers, of course, uh, Mayor Breed, Assembly Member Tin, Supervisors uh, Preston and Chan, and Ms. Kali Won, and, and the entire Kimmongaken Board of the Directors. So I'd like to talk about the value of connections today between the past and present, between countries and between communities. So I first visited this auditorium last September, uh, right after I arrived in San Francisco. The moment I entered, I stepped into this auditorium. What I felt was history. The history of generations of Japanese Americans so I almost heard cheers of Nisei, Nisei Kiss, who, for whom this school presented the only opportunity to get a Japanese education in the 1920s and 30s, and for nervous murmurs of families who were ordered to be present at the start of the war, and the, the applause and letters of the gathering crowds uh, in the 50s and 60s who came here to watch Japanese movies. I realized Paul Osaki was one of them. And, but instead of laughing, he was crying all the time, he confessed <laughs> there. But that sense of history is so palpable and it speaks to this school's deep significance. This place has been a symbol for generations of Nikkei for in San Francisco. The second connection is between two countries, Japan and the US, and it, this is also central to this story. Last fall, during EPIC, Foreign Minister Kamikawa visited JCCCNC, just a block from here. She met with Japanese American community leaders and showed her appreciation and respect for Nikkei community who overcame historical hardships and have brought together Japanese and American culture. From the US side, they are having many similar appreciations from people, including Mayor Breed and uh, Assembly Member Tin, and all others who are here today. One of them is Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi, whom I welcomed last week at the consulate's annual reception in honor of Emperor Naruhito's birthday. She has been a lifelong supporter of Japantown and Japanese American community. And her words underscore the value of Japanese Americans' unique role in our country's relationship. For her great contribution in 2015, she was decorated by the current emperor's father, the Emperor Emeritus Akihito in Tokyo, personally. And you know what? The Emperor Emeritus Akiko, who will turn a spray 91 years old this year, visited San Francisco in 1960 uh, when he was a crown prince, along with the then crown princess, and he was right here in this building at that time. The final type of connection that I'd like to mention is the connection between communities. On November 4th last year, refurbished the Webster Street Village was opened. So arm in arm, along with Mayor Breed and Reverend Arnold Townsend, we crossed the bridge, which was, is connecting Western Edition and Japan Town. That kind of thing, that is a connection of communities. Today, Kimongaken welcomes not just Nikkei children, but children from all backgrounds. They come due to their interest in Japan, its culture, its language, and study them from scratch. 
So Kimongaken can continue to nurture the community's connection to Japanese culture while also sharing Japanese language and culture with non-Nikkei community in an inclusive way. And give back to the non-Japanese communities, including API, Black and Latino communities that have shown their support for over the years. So I see great things in store for the future Kimon Gakuen. And this is thanks in no small part to the efforts of lots of people already mentioned, Assembly Member Ting, whose initial support is critical, and the Mayor Breed and the city who have lent great support to the school. With their support, Kimon Gakuen will be reborn as a hub for the Nikkei community to share and promote Japanese culture and as a center of cont contributing to connections, both local and international. Today, you likely passed the pagoda in Peace Plaza. It was donated by the city of Osaka in 1968. And Osaka Kansai will host the World Expo in 2025. The Expo theme is very much related to this ceremony that is a design, designing future societies for our lives. This project that Kim Bong Gak is, is meant to design our future, own future and the future of Japantown, the city of San Francisco. So, so the title of this groundbreaking event is sensibly titled, Bring History to Our Future. I look forward to seeing that vision, the, the, that the vision of the future come to fruition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Consul General, for your kind words. Um, I'm sure some of you are wondering how we've been able to receive the gifts that we are honoring today. And let me tell you, it doesn't happen without a lot of work to make sure that people know who you are and that you should receive the support. And fortunately for Kimon Gaku, and we had a representative do the heavy lifting for us, get us into gear to submit these applications. He led us through the process and he continues to use his first-hand experience to make sure we make it across the finish line. I do not say these nice things just because he's my boss, but he is really a person with a strong conviction for community, community preservation, and making sure community is here for the next generation. So I'd like to introduce Dean Ito Taylor, Executive Director of the Asian Pacific Islander Legal Outreach, who will then introduce Supervisors Preston and Chan. Thank you. So it's, it's uh, pretty cold in here. You know that we're gonna spend the first dollars on new heating here. <laughs> wow. So um, I, I don't know if you, this is kind of a long program. If you wanna stand up for a second and stretch, Get the blood circulating since it's so cold in here. I, I see Kelly is. <laughs> okay, fine. I, I, I gave you a chance. So um, it's my pleasure to really introduce folks that get introduced all the time, but for this program, this project, for Japantown, for the Western Edition community, uh, these folks really are essential to this movement. Uh, for uh, community infrastructure. Um, and so I want to first uh, start out uh, by introducing the other dean in this district. Uh, I, I don't know if you know the other dean, but uh, he's our supervisor uh, for the Japantown area. And it's not just that, that, that he's been a supervisor uh, representing uh, the Japantown uh, community, but He's gone out of his way every step of the way with every single issue that we've asked him to uh, support us with. He's gone out of his way to come down here, talk to us about those issues, and step up. And that is very unusual for, I hate to say it, for a politician, for an elected official. So we're extremely appreciative of Dean Preston's support and 
the value that he places for our community. Please welcome Supervisor Preston. Thank you so much, Dean. And it is um, it's only in Japantown where I have to explain to people which Dean I am. It's the only place I go. It's a very, I mean, my whole life I never encounter another Dean. And then now it's, uh, I'm the other Dean because of this incredible man. Um, but look, I, it is, I, I'm so filled with joy today. It is great not just seeing this room so full, being here with the Consul General, with Assembly Member Ting, with the Mayor, uh, with my colleague Supervisor Chan, with all these amazing uh, advocates, Diane and Dean and Paul and so many of you uh, who have come together, um, not just here um, in this uh, in essential and important renovation project, but in so many of the projects, we've talked about a lot of them, um, to really invest in Japantown. And I can't tell you what an honor it is to represent the oldest Japantown in the entire country. And then to be standing here in a packed room in the oldest institution and building here within the oldest Japantown. It's very humbling. Um, I will say that, um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you a little behind the scenes. I won't be too long, I promise. But I'm going to take you a little behind the scenes because the, the money that comes to these kind of projects doesn't just happen. And I cannot sing the praises enough of our assembly member Phil Ting and my colleague uh, Connie Chan. And so I'm going to pop the hood a little and talk about how this happens. Because it happens to me all the time when I'm in Japantown. People come and they thank me for money for all these different things. And I have to sit there sometimes. Now, sometimes it's something I went to bat for. We had to fight to get this funding in the bond for the peace plot, other things like that. And sometimes I barely had to lift a finger because this man in Sacramento was five steps ahead uh, and either I called to ask for something and before I finish the sentence, when it's about Japantown, he says, it's done. Or sometimes his staff is reaching out to tell me, the supervisor of the district, that they've already done the work. And I just, that is so rare. I want to say, I, you know, everywhere else in my district, and I think for most of my colleagues, you have to fight tooth and nail especially to get people at the state level or any other level of government to pay attention to something in your district. And it is the exact opposite and has been since the day I took office four years ago in dealing with Phil Ting. So I was thrilled not just to be here to celebrate the investments uh, in this very special place, but to come and be part of celebrating Phil Ting's um, leadership. And I'm gonna tell you the local side of it. Yeah, you can clap please again for Phil Ting. <laughs> So uh, similar experience in getting these local funds and very much appreciate the partnership uh, from the mayor and from the entire board of supervisors. Um, but I was trying to push uh, a kind of crazy amount of affordable housing funding in 2022. And my colleagues were looking at me like I had three heads. And Connie Chan was trying to push the API equity fund with Cali and everyone, a lot of people in City Hall were looking at them like they had three heads. Um, and uh, Connie and I joined forces in a very innovative, I think the first time it had been done in the budget process, a $112 million using long-term debt financing stuff that I barely understand, but thank God the controller understood. Um, but we fought for it. And, and that, that is what created that, and Connie I'm sure will speak more about it, but that is what created the city side of these funds, and I want to say it didn't come easy, and it was the last thing to be negotiated in the 2022 budget, and everyone was up late, and uh, that was the piece, um, and we're just so thrilled that that happened, and I just want to say without question, while I'm very proud of all these investments, and I look forward to this work being done here, and this incredible school and community center being uh, re-envisioned and, and uh, better than ever. Uh, I just want to make very, very clear um, that this would not be happening without the incredible leadership at the state level of Filting and locally of uh, my friend and colleague, Connie Chan. Thank you all so much.
So Supervisor Connie Chan, um, District 1, um, has a large population of API folks. Uh, a lot of JAs moved out of, of the Japantown area because of forced relocation and ended up in, in District 1. Um, but that has nothing to do with Connie Chan's commitment to the API community and San Francisco in general. Um, under her leadership as the budget chair, uh, not only has she pushed forward uh, the API equity fund, but, and I remember having to meet with her on a Sunday afternoon or something out in the Richmond district to talk about how we're gonna get this done. Um, that's the type of commitment that she has to building the infrastructure of all the API communities, uh, especially serving the disadvantage of San Francisco. But Connie um, uh, not only has been the spearhead for this project, but is always there when community services need support. And she understands the needs uh, for, uh, you know, culturally competent community services across uh, the, the city. And so we really appreciate her ongoing support. And I just have to mention that these two supervisors are up for re-election so you know what we, what, what we have to do. Please welcome Connie Chan. Thank you, you're all too kind. Um, I'm keeping my mask on, I'm, I'm just getting over a cold, um, but I'm just so honored and grateful to be with all of you here. Uh, let me just say this, that as a first generation immigrant, I came to, to San Francisco's Chinatown when I was 13 years old, and so that's my experience as immigrant and growing up here, everything that I can get my hands on, you know, coming back from Hong Kong or Taiwan or China and just thinking about food, music, you know, uh, film. And so for sure, just like Paul, my son is looking forward to the next like Shogun. But I said, I'm not gonna cover your eyes on the racy scenes, so watch out. Um, so while, us as immigrants and even generations of immigrants, those are born here, like my son, we grasp onto our roots and we want to know our roots. But nothing, nothing compares to a space where our community can actually gather in person, physically. Nothing compared to a space where, I have said this before, but being able to speak our language, eat our food, enjoy our music with each other in a very safe space it's amazing, and I think that is what this space is, represents. And I'm so grateful to see the slogan of bring history to our future as a mom, that I wanna say that's exactly what I look forward to see, all the spaces serving our AAPI community, that's exactly that, that we bring the history to our future. But most importantly, what I'm grateful for um, is that we're doing it together. And I wanna say the AAPI Equity Fund, that idea, really is actually coming from Assembly Member Phil Tang, who actually reminded me during this time when we fight against anti-Asian sentiment is that we need that space that we can call home and that he consistently invests all over San Francisco. I think that when we look back five years from now and we're gonna see many Asian community thriving and having a safe space and community hub, I think I can almost point to you that every single one of them is because Assembly Member Phil Tang and contribution. And so for that, he's deserved way more than that lay and you know our standing ovation and I uh, think, unlike Paul, I think he's not done. I think he's gonna go somewhere with that and I'm just really grateful. And then for Supervisor Dean Preston, I, I sometimes joke he's my brother from another mother. <laughs> and um, because again, we, we serve this community. But let me end with this. None of this can happen without you. The community that loves it, the community that attends to it, those that may not be recognized and be named from time and time again, the generations of our elders and the generation to come, that is because of you. The community is the reason why we're here and that's why we're doing this. So for that, I'm gonna test out my Japanese, Paul. Arigatou gozaimasu. So next I have the uh, pleasure of introducing Callie Wong. 
who is the director of the API Council. And, and you're going to say, well, let's say API Council, what is that, Chamber of Commerce? What, the API Council is the strongest uh, body of nonprofit leadership in, in San Francisco and probably in California. And the API Council is kind of one of those grassroots organizations under the radar, is responsible for most of the community service funding in San Francisco, most of the uh, uh, advocacy for folks that don't have their own voices. Um, and uh, it really uh, is, is the most effective organization when it comes to uh, initiatives like the API Equity Fund. And I have to give a shout out before Callie comes up here to David Ho, who I think was in the back somewhere. He's trying to be anonymous, but. <laughs> David Ho uh, was nagging me about this equity fund idea. I don't know if he got that from Phil Ting or Callie, but Callie looked at me and said, is he crazy? He wants to build all these community centers in, to, to build up the permanent infrastructure of the API communities in San Francisco. And this is where we are today, David. Uh, Kelly, under her leadership, the, the API Council would be probably like infighting all the time. But we are a united force for community services and we thank you, Kelly. Please come up. Thank you, Dean. Um, I think you basically said it all, so I don't have much to speak about, but I was asked to speak a little bit about the API Equity Fund, and you know, once again, I think we don't thank this person enough, and that is Supervisor Connie Chang. <laughs> Under her leadership, we have today spent over $30 million in API Equity Fund. Those, that $30 million have officially funded six buildings throughout San Francisco. We have one in Chinatown, two in Soma, one in the TL, this one in Japantown, and one in the Richmond. And again, you know, Connie did this, I want to mention, before she became budget chair, so that in itself gets, I believe, a standing ovation. So thank you, thank you, Connie, for always looking out, you know, for our API communities in San Francisco. You know, throughout this process, when we were surveying members and different community organizations, we were looking at, you know, what do we want to do in Japantown? Out of the six buildings, this was the only building that the community already owned. So the idea behind the API Equity Fund during recovery coming out of this high intensity of anti-Asian hate was how do we bring services to its home? Majority of nonprofits in San Francisco, they don't actually own their own home where they're providing services. And that gets very scary, tricky, and dangerous for you know communities of need. And throughout this whole process, especially in Japantown, everyone said, we don't want to buy a building. We want to bring alive and renovate Kamongaku. And so it just brings me such joy and pleasure to be here today. And I just want to give a final shout out to Assembly Member Phil Ting. Out of the six buildings, I'm pretty sure he is also funding, is matching, you know, 95% out of the six. So this is really the API Equity Fund and under the leadership of Phil is really a great example of when community comes together, when the city comes together, and when the state comes together, we can really bring back so much, you know, for immigrant communities, for immigrant corridors and just history of what brings us all together. So I look forward to see this building up and running in a few years. I remember being here just two years ago with Diane and Dean and Rich, and we are just so excited. Um, hopefully next time we come here, we can have another celebration. So thank you. Thank you so much. And please know we don't take your support of Kimongakwen lightly. We will use it um, and make sure that we bring you a fully rehabilitated 
building that will be um, able for all community to use. So um, Kelly mentioned a little bit about history and um, some of you know that I'm kind of into history, so I just wanted to share a little bit about um, this building and its landmark. Let's see, in 2019, Kimon Gakuen was granted landmark designation by the city and county of San Francisco. And even though San Francisco has been recognized as a U.S. city since 1850 and have tons of buildings and structures all over the city, we only have a little over 300 landmarks. And Kimon Gakuen is landmark number 288. So please know that this is a big deal. Please clap your hands. That's a big deal. And when the city, the board, our two great board members, our favorite board members, uh, voted to make Kimongakuen a landmark designation, they noted the significance about Kimongakuen uh, as place in the city for its association with its social, cultural, educational enrichment of Japanese Americans in San Francisco during the 20th century and because of its association as a processing center during World War II. And to this date, there are no other San Francisco landmarks specifically related to Japanese American history. So um, I know that many of you in this room are very happy and are very vested in Kimon Gakuen, and I hope that you will now take pride that it is one of the very few landmarks in our city. I also want to acknowledge that Kimon Gakuen is a legacy business. Uh, we do have Rick Carrillo, who is the business program manager of the legacy business program. Uh, I want to give a big plug to Rick and to the legacy business program and to any of those legacy business owners who may be in the audience today. This is a really special program that really goes out of its way to recognize the hard work of small businesses in, in the city. And Rick in particular works really hard to get them recognized. He actually sometimes writes the applications for them. So please come talk to him if you want to know uh, more about the program and get your business the recognition it, that it deserves. So um, we are now coming to the conclusion of our pro our program, but it is a special way that we are going to conclude today. I'd like to ask our two new co-chairs of the Capital com Campaign to come forward. I'd like to introduce them to all of you. It's Dr. Yasuko Fukuda and Jeffrey Matsuoka, and they are going to come up here, <laughs> and they're going to, as our first donation, a community donation, our first community donation, accept a gift from Boku Kodama from the Committee Against Nihonmachi Eviction. Boku, are you here? <laughs> and then we'll adjourn for lunch. Just give us a second. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Matsuoka, and I'm one of the co-chairs, along with Yasuko, on the, uh, the capital campaign. And I want to welcome everybody and really, really appreciate all of the support that uh, you, you're, you've given us, uh, especially, especially Assemblyman King, but all of you who are here today. And um, you know, I hope that uh, we can all work together to make this a really great space. I, I have deep roots here. I, I came to, like Yasuko, I was a student here. I remember sitting up standing up here on the stage as a six-year-old kid with the Ohanashi Taikai. Um, so I really appreciate, we really appreciate your su continued support for Kimo Gakuen. We're gonna really make this a really nice space. So. So this place really brings back some memories. Um, you know, talk about how old I am. I was here as an usher in the late 50s as an eight-year-old boy uh, when they had the Japanese uh, films here. Uh, also, my three kids went to Neil Much Little Friends, so this place really does have a lot of history for me. So I am representing uh, the organizers of the Committee Against Nihomachi Eviction. Uh, back in the 70s, uh, we were involved in fighting to preserve the community. Um, so one of the things that we wanted to do is pay things forward. And so we got together 
at the 50th anniversary, which was last August. And uh, we celebrated uh, what Cain had done in the community, as well as the, all the people that were involved in the community at the time and trying to maintain the personal, the uh, ownerships, the local ownerships of the community. And that's what the fight was all about. Uh, in that, uh, at the 50th anniversary, we came up with a thing called the Sansei Legacy uh, Fund, and it's at sanselegacy.org if you're interested. And we started to put together funds from all the people that organized the Kane reunion. And so that's what this check is all about. Um, so it's the first installment. It's $9,400 uh, that we're giving over to the to the uh, King Mon. All, all individuals. So we're hoping that this will spark more of the individuals in the community, especially among the Sansei, who we hope will follow their parents, the Niseis who gave so generously to the community. We hope that we're, we're gonna be able to do the same thing here. The theme of this, which is uh, the history part, is really important as well. And so several of us during two year period developed a documentary about uh, about Japantown's uh, fight for recognition and ownership back in 1972. The title of the film is called Gambaro. Um, Prince Akihito and Princess Michiko came, and I got to get dressed up in a kimono to greet them. My mother was all dressed up, the whole community was dressed up, and I kind of remember them. I more remember the private jet that they had, and I got to tour it. Um, but isn't that amazing that we had a community here that not only serves the local area, and now I see it as not just San Francisco, in California, in the United States, to really promote our culture, language, um, traditions, and build that bridge because we really are global and we need the international connections as well. Thank you all very, very much, and I'm delighted to uh, be involved in this. Thank you, Kane. This is a, a very, very meaningful gift to all of us. Um, it means just as much as our gifts from the state of California and from the city and county of San Francisco. And I think it was mentioned earlier, Phil, we wish that we could make those uh, origami crane lays into real gold for you because that's how much you mean to us but I hope that you will take it as our appreciation for, for the leadership that you have given us and for uh, I think mem members of the Mayor's Office of Community and Housing uh, are here and we also want to th thank MOHCD for um, your support and we look forward to working with all of you. So. Thank you again for coming out. Um, before you leave, please take a look at what the future of this particular auditorium and our whole building will look like under the direction of Trainer HL. I believe they are here and I want to give a big shout out to them because they've stuck with us through thick and thin. Again, thank you, Phil. Thank you, city. And please stick around and have some food. Dean made it. So if Dean makes it, you should stick around. Thank you.